instead of my getting up at my usual 7 a.m. wake time, I went on a night out before and I got back at two in the morning. So I set my alarm instead for 10 a.m. And yeah, I had a reasonably good night of sleep then. So the night afterwards, I barely slept at all. I had an absolutely dreadful night of sleep after that. And I feel that I've broken everything. I feel that I've broken my sleep drive. I feel like I've broken my body clock and I've pretty much gone back to square one. Is that what's happened? Please don't tell me I've gone backwards because I just cannot handle it after all the progress that I've been making. And this is similar to one of the comments that I saw in my comment section on one of these videos. Someone who thought they'd ruined everything, an entire month of good work when it comes to their sleep, just by putting their foot wrong ever so slightly and getting up three hours after their usual wake time. And the answer to this question is absolutely not. You've not done anything wrong just by not sticking to uh, these behavior changes uh, perfectly. So the body clock and the sleep, but not this really fragile Fabergé egg that you've got to wrap up in the cotton wool and you've got a tree, very fragile. It's yes, when you've got insomnia, your body clock and your sleep drive is all over the place. So you might be waking up at say 12 o'clock if it's taken you six hours to fall asleep. You might be trying to nap during the daytime. You know, it's like you've got the body clock of someone who's constantly moving between time zones. And of course, that person's not going to sleep well. But once you've started putting these behavioral changes in place, once you've started seeing results, something tiny like a lion, even if it's a long lion, isn't going to make everything implode. You're not gonna catch fire if you do that. What's far, far worse is worrying and obsessing and thinking that if you do something slightly, slightly wrong, everything's going to catch fire. <laughs> That's completely not how sleep works. It's the complete opposite of what I'm trying to teach with all the work that I do on my course and on my YouTube channel. It's, it's maybe getting up at 10 o'clock instead of seven o'clock might have had an impact on the sleep the following night because perhaps they'd have gone to bed when they weren't sleepy, when the sleep time was, was a little less, or they'd have gone to bed not sleepy and this would have been the uh, perfect breeding ground to lie in bed and to ruminate in and the anxiety start to kick in again and then to think they've gone back to square one. But realistically, there are 1,001 variables that affect your sleep. You cannot possibly control them all. So to think that just by doing one tiny thing wrong, you're going to ruin everything, it's completely wrong. And people like to kind of peg things on, oh, I did this action and got a poor night of sleep. Therefore, it must have been this action that caused that. Well, correlation is not causation. And really, worrying and obsessive and hyper-analyzing and going into the data and thinking about all the dreadful, awful things you did that may have caused this poor night of sleep is kind of showing that the kind of core teaching it's not quite sunk in yet. It is the obsession, it is the control. Good sleepers will have lions and they'll be absolutely fine. So just have a think if you've fallen into this trap where you're always trying after a poor night of sleep to try and find the culprit format and ask yourself, is this something I would have done when I was a good sleeper? Is this something a good sleeper would do? And is actually the obsession and the control far more damaging to my sleep than that one tiny little erroneous event that I'm trying to blame everything for. It is, I think you know the answer to that question. All right, sleepz.com for a step-by-step -step program and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.